Welcome to TGS, Transform, Grow, Succeed. This podcast is about your work as a caring professional and the wicked systemic issues that all of us are transforming into opportunities to achieve excellence in any environment. My name is Dr. Tim Grabois, Executive Director of TGS Educational Consulting, and I'm excited to introduce Daniela Figueroa today, Director of Programs at Youth on Their Own, or YODO. YODO's mission is to support high school graduation and continued success of youth who are experiencing homelessness. And as Director of Programs, Daniela has a key role ensuring that the entire YODO team lives their values out loud each and every day, or as Daniela might say, mission obsessed. And Daniela, I just want to check in with you. Did I get that right? Yes, you did. Really happy. <laughs> All right, fantastic. And Danielle, I really am very excited to, uh, to have this conversation with you today. I mean, we worked together on some training opportunities uh, with, with your amazing team uh, related. I think we've done one on data. We've done one on growth mindset. We've done one on self-care um, throughout this past year. And one of the things that I noticed was that every time I visited, I heard you and everybody else use this phrase, mission obsessed. And, and I'm, I'm always down for a good obsession. And so I was just wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about what that phrase is and, and maybe what it means. Yeah, but I think um, for us, what it means is a uh, real intention towards living out our mission day to day. We we are all um, invested in what we do. It's just the mission of session part is in those moments where we can really stray from the course for a very good reason. Um, it reminds us to keep our focus back to where it belongs and it sort of keeping us in our lane and doing that in a way that's really high quality, effective, and also exciting. I think there's this element too of it being like a cultural piece um, that we can build a lot of team and unity and energy, urgency, all of those things that help us um, move toward, towards our goal of helping youth, for us helping youth graduate high school. And so it's become this sort of uh, theme, a uh, 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 rallying cry uh, for, for us to, to rally around, really. And I've even noticed that at the different trainings I was, uh, was, was attending as the, kind of the year progressed, I was hearing more and more that staff were using that phrase, mission obsessed, that it was something that wasn't just, just, just you doing. It was definitely something I was hearing staff use. Yeah, definitely. It's It's been really neat to see folks uh, embrace this sort of mentality, ideology, whatever you want to call it, um, and, and using it in day to day and bringing, that, bringing them up themselves the, rather than it just coming from me, which is, I think, really important, especially when you want to establish cultural things like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's something that was really interesting is, is that you know, I, I've had a chance to interact with Yoda over a, a couple of years, just in different capacities that I had as a, as a school leader um, or, or other collaborations that I've had with other just different, different staff members. And one of the things that I've always kind of noticed about Yoda is that you tend to be an organization that's just fairly disciplined for the most part about doing what you do. And what you do is helping high school youth graduate. That's, that's what you do. I mean, that's, that's the kind of mission that, that would get people out of bed and, and eager and, and up and ready to work. And, and, I'm, and, and, and even with that, with that kind of reputation, that at least you have with me for sure, um, that, that noting that, you know what, we let, let's, let's not just live our mission. Let's, let's, let's make it an obsession. Let's, let's really make it kind of a guiding, a guiding focus here. What, where did, where did mission obsess come from? Where, where did it, kind of, where's kind of the, the seed of it? Yeah. So, you know, we really, like everybody, um, had to pivot hard, <laughs> um, during the quarantine phase mm -hmm. of the pandemic. Our whole service model was very school-based, in-person, on-site, meeting youth where they are. Youth would engage with us here as well as because um, we have a pantry. So um, we lost all of that. We had, to, we had to change almost every aspect of our program services. And so in doing that, uh, we became very, very flexible to meet the economic needs. So it became maybe the, 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 the economic need became secondary to the school graduation. It, mm -hmm. Out of necessity, I, I mean, like it didn't make sense to push so hard towards the education side when, you know, that was in flux and we have our young people especially um, had giant barriers to virtual learning, no internet, no computers. And so it would have meant um, because we incentivize 
uh, school attendance with our services. So it would have meant a lot of you not accessing key services during a time where people, you know, didn't have work like they used to, community like they used to. So um, our program radically changed um, and it was a good thing. We were able to do a lot more on sort of the financial assistance side um, than we ever have. Mm -hmm. And after a year of that, we came into this academic year um, kind of going back to the education focus as we were seeing youth come back to school and uh, but still remaining flexible. We kind of had both ends. And in the course of that, what happened is we were we were continuing to deprioritize what is our mission, which is to help youth graduate high school. And um, we were not being effective at that. It, it just was, um, we were we were not incentivizing the getting to school in the same way as, as we had pre-pandemic. And uh, I think the, the other element that we always grapple with um, is because we don't address homelessness, our, our, we don't have housing programs. That's just really gonna address homelessness. Our um, program is, is aiming at something else. Um, it can get it can get frustrating to see the impacts of homelessness um, and the and the barriers you have to navigate, and that we don't have any uh, program services going to address that specific barrier. We do other things um, to mitigate the impact, but we don't actually address the actual impact itself. And so, it can be really hard as direct line staff um, because there's a lot of pain that comes with that and trauma and all, all the things. And so it's very, very easy to justify why we should be doing more. And we definitely found ourselves doing that uh, in the fall. We started to, um, it just like happened organically, but we started to pay for more and more hotel stays. We started to pay for multiple months of rent and our resources were just being sucked right out. It was, the money was coming out in a faster rate that we could really sustain. Like we can, we could afford it, but it was, not going to be sustainable long term, and it also wasn't necessarily equitable because there were some young some young people who might be experiencing similar challenges who just by nature of their circumstances weren't as closely connected to us who were missing out on a potential avenue for help. And so, um, the third thing to that is we're not experts at housing; we're experts at helping young people stay in school. And so we were definitely way out of our lane. And there was consequences to that because we weren't effectively supporting youth through this process. There was a huge impact there. All this to say that I think that really in conversations with our CEO, this really came from her. Um, and, and finding a way, and this uh, Vision Obsessed really launched in January of this, this year. Um, but after the semester of, of dealing with this and then kind of like all the pivots from pandemic, um, realized we needed to like re-energize, refocus around what it is we're here to do. What is our lane and how do we get really, really invested and really, really good at that? Because I think that's the promise we make to the youth we serve is that in our role, in our lane, we are gonna be 100% there for you. And we just kind of lost track a little bit. And um, so it was really nice time in January to get re-centered, refocused and really invest in this idea of mission obsessed. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting because you, you said a lot that I think is really important, especially since most of our listeners are, are school leaders and, and work in, in, in the school setting. And one of the things that, um, that you know, for folks who are just getting to know a youth on their own is, is that, 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 that pre-pandemic, a lot of your services really did happen at school sites that, that, that program coordinators would visit. They would, they, they would see youth. They would, um, there's, you have the whole financial assistance program that was very closely tied to attendance and closely tied to uh, continuing to uh, pass classes in schools and to make progress towards graduation. And all of that changed when schools didn't even know how progress to graduation was going to happen um, when, when the pandemic started. And it sounds like what I'm hearing is, is that um, as the needs of your youth increase and barriers to, to, to school increased, uh, uh, staff and Yoto in general wanted to get their arms around bigger and bigger needs uh, but it was never really the mission of, of Yodo in the first place to do those kinds of things. So they're, they're, that, that, that needed to be solved uh, more comprehensively than just what Yodo can do. 
And, and so Mission Obsessed came out of a need to really get back to what Yodo knows Yodo is good at and to do that with, with, with excellence. Yes, that, that's correct. And I'll, and I'll add that um, an element of, of being mission obsessed that has actually been a wonderful thing is that when we stay in our lane, we have an opportunity to engage with folks who are in their lanes and good at what they do. And so in this hotel kind of kerfuffle we had in the fall, we engaged housing providers and said, hey, we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> we need to stop doing this. Would you be willing to partner with us? We'll resource it. And then we can create this really strong bridge into what you all do best, which is housing. And so I think, you know, in a school context, you know, as a former educator, I really understand that, you know, schools are meant to educate. That is their main mission and purpose and goal. And there are so many things that show up in a classroom that are beyond just educating uh, young people. And I think the key thing is there that schools don't need to be experts at the other stuff. I think it's the partnerships and engaging folks who are and opening doors to have these really strong partnerships. It's been integral for us as a uh, um, you know, high school graduation program of, of this really key partnership with schools and schools embracing us has made that really great because we are additive to, to what the schools are already doing and help support and, and, and give some resources. But, you know, there's nuances to all of that. And then there's also some, you know, resource issues. But I think that, that there's a, there could be a question and mission obsession of, of of saying no to things that maybe we should be saying yes to, but I don't, I, I think it's actually providing opportunities to engage other folks mm -hmm. and partner in really cool ways. Danielle, so what you're saying is, is really uh, challenges what schools have been trying to do over the last 20 years in many respects, where um, schools have uh, uh, become uh, realizing that, that kids, that our, our children and youth bring all that they are to classrooms, uh, what schools have often tried to do is respond by, okay, we'll just be capable of, of meeting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger needs. And, you know, there's schools that have, you know, the, have food pantries in them. There's schools that um, have social workers who do home visits. There's schools that provide that, that are hubs for mental health resources. And a lot of these things do happen through community partnerships and schools aren't trying to do uh, all of it on, the, on their own. But one of the things that I've noticed with many of the uh, clients that I work with is a big barrier to having those partnerships is often the school feels like it needs to be in charge of it. That mm -hmm. like the school needs to be the one to do it, to resource it, to provide mm -hmm. the services, to hire the staff, to create the space, to, to, to do all of those things. And, and it sound, and, and, and I honestly hadn't considered this before about what mission obsessed might mean, that it might actually mean saying no to anything that a school doesn't really do. And, and a big part of that might mean, okay, what really does a school do? What does a school do? What do our students need that's beyond that? And then who is really good at doing those things? Yeah, yeah, I think, I mean, and, and that's what's kind of alluding to about it being nuanced because nuanced, it's complicated. Um, and, and there are highly trained professionals working in school settings mm -hmm. that can do the social emotional, can um, do, you know, interventions from that is, that are holistic, all of that stuff. And I think it's just not well-resourced across the board in um, all educational settings. There, and we see a lot of differences from school to school about, you know, some schools do have the food pantry, do have all this, and that's great for our, our youth because it's a one-stop shop. And transportation for them becomes a huge barrier. They have to travel to these other places. And, you know, they're spending most of their time in school. And so, um, it, I think that that it's it's more nuanced than maybe like I'm saying it, and I think um, there are roles that schools might have to play that are outside of education. I just think it's really articulating that very clearly um, yes. and and engaging for in a school setting anyway. Um, all the stakeholders, the students, the parents, the the teachers, the leadership, the community even around what the school is there to do. And that could vary depending on the community. But um, I think it's important to like get very clear what is it that we're set up to do. For us, that means focusing on our core services and partnering in other 
the other ways that we don't serve you because the reality is um, that partnership also helps the success of our mission as well. But I think for schools, you know, it's complicated. There's a lot of baggage around all of that stuff, a lot of history of under resourcing. And so, but I, I, I agree with you. I think there's some opportunity there because I think there are nonprofits willing to come to the table. Um, and we certainly are. And, and as I said, schools have embraced this. So it's been really, I think, transformative for our youth. Um, and, you know, we, we support in, in the best way we can. Mm -hmm. um, the school liaison, school counselors who volunteer for us, um, you know, we're, we're a resource avenue for them. So, yeah. It, it, um, no, but it is very nuanced though, right? Because on, on, on one hand, schools have historically employed very highly trained personnel who can do an awful lot of things and have been doing that very well. And, and so it's, it's not a matter of saying, okay, now we don't have school counselors anywhere. You're going to go work for a nonprofit and then that's going to, like, like that, 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 that's, that's, kind of silly to 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 all to, to think of that kind of that that's what mission obsessed would mean in a school setting um and yet i i do think it is it is that that yoda yoda is really instructive here is there because there there is a tendency in education to to want to increase the scope of what we try to do well beyond this what we're actually able to do and i'm, I'm just thinking of all the teachers right now i i don't i have not met a teacher who feels fresh as a daisy i just don't Right now, in many respects, like the, the, the last year was a more challenging academic year for teachers than even the first year in pandemic was, and, and an awful lot of it was as we are trying to do something that we are not equipped to do and have no idea how to do, and 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 yes, pandemic was a very unique example mm -hmm. of that. But there's other examples of that that kind of show up in education from time to time that we're we're trying to do something that we really don't know how to do. And there's, there probably are people, if we just kind of look like this in our community, that maybe have been doing this for a long time. Maybe not at the scale we would need. I mean, there's 81 schools just in Tucson Unified School District. But, you know, but, but could it perhaps be some, uh, uh, a more disciplined way of looking at how we meet the needs of our students, perhaps more effective? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think that's, um, you know, definitely valid. And I, um, it's like, it's almost like thinking at a bit from a strength space lens of what am I good at in my key role and what am I not? And then who's good at that thing, coming back to what you said earlier. And so, you know, it's, 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 it's a little bit of a scary shift because, you know, it's on one hand, acknowledging when you some things you're not so good at <laughs> uh, and maybe have been doing. <laughs> For us, it's like we had been doing some things that we were not good at. Um, and, um, but, but it could be very powerful. I, I think that it's this uh, more community-based approach of together, we're gonna figure this out, uh, then I'm wholly responsible for doing it all. Mm -hmm. And there's like, you know, balance in between those two, two things. But I think um, for us, I'll say, even leading up to Mission Obsessed as a theme, theme for us, um, our CEO, Elizabeth um, Slater, she, really approached our role as an organ nonprofit organization and as very community-based. And so it was really about coming as partners to the table. And in the sector, it can be more competitive, kind of having a scarcity mindset. It's also why we've been on this growth mindset kick. But um, that's really helped set up the stage for um, mission obsession because um, you could feel like that singular focus is too narrow sometimes. But if we say, we are going to be in our lane and then we leave room for other folks to join us and support our lane and we support theirs that it just becomes more one a little bit more organic because it adapts to the needs of youth but two i think more communal um, we work together to support we create a, a network of of folks in our community nonprofit, who met you know schools whatever whatever those partners are create a network of folks who are kind of wrapping around um, our youth, if you will. So it's not just Yodo so, uh, solving youth homelessness in Tucson or for example, or in a school-based setting, perhaps it's not just the local elementary school solving all of the, uh, all of the prop, uh, your access to resource issues that might happen in the community that, that there's that, that we really are having a team. And so if a youth comes to a program coordinator and, and needs a month's rent, 
you know, it's, it's, it might be easier for that program coordinator to be mission obsessed if they know that there's another partner that can do that, right. that can do that. And, and so it sounds like that's really been a big part of building those partnerships. And I'd like to talk a bit more about that just uh, when we come back from break. Let's take a quick break. And when we come back, I'm curious to know more about what effect mission obsessed has had on your team's day-to-day -day work and maybe a little bit about what the difference between having a mission is and being mission obsessed. All right, so let's take a break real quick. Youth on Their Own is a local nonprofit that supports the high school graduation and continued success of Pima County youth experiencing homelessness. Since its founding in 1986, Yoro has helped thousands of young people graduate from high school and pursue their dreams. If you'd like to get involved, consider donating to Yoro's annual back to school drive. Starting July 1st, Yoro will be collecting food, hygiene products, and school supplies to help homeless youth in our community start the year off right. If you'd like to make a financial contribution, don't forget that all donations to Yodo are tax deductible. And if you live in Arizona, eligible for the Arizona Charitable Tax Credit. For more information, go to yoto.org or follow Yodo on Facebook or Instagram. All right, and we're back. All right, so Danielle, I'm, I'm curious to talk a little bit more about uh, just, just that, the, it, it, that, that, that focus, that mission obsessed um, it brings and what effect it might have on your day-to-day -day work. But I kind of like to start, if possible, uh, uh, with a slightly different question. Many nonprofits and schools have mission statements, Yodo included. From your perspective, what is the difference between having a mission and being mission obsessed? Well, like a mission defines your purpose. Um, I mean, that's, that's a very important element of nonprofits. Um, it's why folks engage with nonprofits. There's a connection to purpose. Um, and mission obsessed is how you live out that purpose um, mm -hmm. every day. I mean, there's, there's you know, different ways to call mission obsessed, we're calling it that, but um, it, uh, it's, it's how we are very intentional about that in the day-to-day -day practice. Those reminders, those um, uh, 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 guidelines that keep us going in that same direction because it's very easy to stray, as I mentioned earlier. Um, and so uh, it, it's um, just like a really important element. A lot of nonprofits, a lot of just organizations um, struggle with like, yes, we're all invested in this mission and then we don't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> because we get in the grind and we're doing yep. our jobs and um, we are like, if you ask anybody pre-mission, it's just like, how do you feel about the mission? Like, yep, I'm here for it. It's great. But if we asked, how do you live that out day to day? I, I think that would be a little bit harder question to answer. Um, and you would get a lot of different responses. And so the mission, it's mission of this has become a, this, the language we use being really intentional of we're like, what about, we really want to do this thing. And the question comes up is how is this mission obsessed? How does this link back to our purpose? Um, and so, so it's been, it's been really great to see that our purpose reflects on a more consistent basis in our work. So the, so the mission then is, is that just, it's just the words, it's just, it's the words that define the purpose. And it's, you know, generally speaking, I haven't run across too many missions in nonprofits or schools um, that, that I wouldn't agree with, that I wouldn't think are, are good things for people to be doing and engaged in and probably very fulfilling. And, and, and you're right, that when most people see them, like, oh yeah, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Uh, but the mission obsessed then really is about how you live that out loud, it sounds like. How, how do you take the, the, what, what you know, the attracted someone to work for that organization in the first place and, and make it part of that day-to-day -day life? Uh, where do you see mission obsessed like, showing up in day-to-day -day life at Yoda? Yeah, I mean, I, I, that, the one example I shared earlier is that we're creating new ideas. It's having this a check, okay, how does this link back to what we're here to do? Um, but, you know, it's come up many other ways. Um, if we're talking about budgets um, and we're, we're uh, there's so much, um, I don't know if complex is the right word, but there's a lot that goes into resource distribution. And so, um, whether we require a thing or not, whether we would allow max allowance we give for that particular resource. And so we, again, mission obsessed will come up, with, especially when we're feeling guilty. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Guilty about the impact of our decisions. Like, 
if we're gonna, um, we wanna distribute a resource equitably, equitably um, it can mean, honestly, that really translates to there are gonna be young people who are denied a service mm -hmm. because we have, we serve, you know, over 1300 youth this year alone that, uh, and we're all, all, I mean, there are unlimited resources. So like all of us have to grapple with this. Um, we can, as we're, as we're like navigating this, the impact of our decisions, it can be like, okay, did we check the box? Are we doing what we, our purpose is set up to do? And so those conversations, mission obsessed conversations. Brought, and then all that folks need to say is, is mission obsessed. And we are like, oh, okay, let's, let's check it against that filter. Yeah. Um, uh, another way, uh, kind of more positive ways, I mean, all of this is positive, but other like um, maybe uh, ways that it's shown up more in joy is we just um, had our annual end of the year celebration and there's a mission obsessed award now. And so someone gets recognized for, for the demonstrating mission obsession, you know, really well. Um, our, our, one of our sub departments um, have been really working on creating their own mission statement statement that is under the umbrella of our organizational mission statement so that they can be mission obsessed and really intentional about what that looks like for their particular team. And so it's been really, really cool to see folks engage with that and, and, and interpret mission obsessed that fits whatever key role that they have in our organization. But it's been really so you're, you're you're seeing it you're seeing it happen so that that uh, that it's lived out loud it's it's, it's something that's, that's talked about it's, it's celebrated it's something that's that it sounds like it's probably taking some discipline on your part as a leader to make sure that that's the that's the focus that that you know, that you're talking about and so we talked to you know, just just a lot about just mission obsessed I, I'm just now becoming a little bit obsessed with that way of talking about it um a, a bit and and I, I what i really love about it is that you know in general i, I tend to shy away from obsessions i tend to sh sh shy away from getting too into something uh, yeah. a little bit uh but in this way this really flips it to that positive side of things where where you no know, we need to be disciplined about doing our very best to do what we know we can do well and and we've talked a lot about what that seems to mean to you what it does mean to you and your team one of the things that i always tell anyone that I work with, whether it's a school, nonprofit, government agency, is wherever you're at is a beautiful place to be. Wherever you're at right now is, is where you are, and it's a beautiful place to be. And I'm asking that question in this spirit, just acknowledging that every organization is full of amazing people who are just in different places um, and come from different contexts and, and, and will approach our mission from different perspectives you know, as, as we start this work towards becoming more and more obsessed. And I'm wondering then, just knowing that you have different parts of, of youth on their own who do different kinds of things, which parts of Yodo became mission obsessed fairly quickly? And, and from your parts, where did that obsession need more time to kind of to, 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 to smolder and burn before the, 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 before the obsession grew? Yeah, I mean, I think there was a pretty quick buy-in at the leadership level. Um, uh, the managers and directors really got invested in this concept of mission obsession. We also got to be right at the beginning of all of that and mm. um, uh, engage in that process very early on. Um, so, so that happened that happened really quickly. I think it's it's key because if your leadership um, doesn't uh, buy in, it can be really tricky to establish anything that's cultural. So um, but not impossible because I've seen a lot of things come from the ground, the roots of, of what we do the direct line staff up, but um, you know, having support from leadership matters. And so that was fairly easy. <laughs> and then it was the pitching this concept to the rest of the team. And um, some were like anything, some people were like, yes, I'm here for it. And some people were a little bit more tentative, which I think is just like natural, like what is this gonna be for me in my day to day? Yeah. Does this mean I'm gonna, get a bunch of no's. <laughs> um, and then I think once folks bought in as then okay, how, how do we actually use this in practice? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's taken some time. And I think um, a ton of intention in, in, in bringing up and making it be a norm. And I think 
we've done a fairly good job at that. Um, uh, I do, right, I think the opportunity area we have right now is at the ground staff level as we're navigating need is that sort of like, I'm doing enough. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a, the mission of CES part because it, it means that you're you're sticking to what your key role is. And that's so important for in human services work for boundaries, for self-care. It, it ties to a lot of things. A lot of um, just like a lot of need. Like poverty is real, and it's it's not great. <laughs> um, so so you, and, you, and you engage with youth that are. Mm -hmm. in, in really tough situations, situations that are probably really hard for your staff to hear about and watch. Yeah, definitely. And so I think in there is like um, Mission Obsessed can be a reminder that as so long as we're in our lane, I would do a really good job at that, that, that we are doing enough. That is being Mission Obsessed. That is being everything that a unit youth needs us to be at that time because um, we can cause harm trying to do other things we're not expert at doing. We don't know what we're doing. And um, particularly with young, or young people who have experienced trauma, that trust is so key. And I think we could break a lot of trust when we're trying to do too much, um, both, both from a services standpoint, standpoint, but also from a practitioner standpoint. You take on a lot of more responsibility than totally yours, and you burn out, and you're, you're not going to sustain that for a long time. And then you break promises that you like kind of implicitly made with youth. And so I think that's where there, there's an opportunity to really use mission of says to remind us that we're, we're doing enough. Mm -hmm. Like we are where we're supposed to be. This is enough yeah. and we need to be okay with that. Um, and then I think just continue to practice to use it more often sometimes. Um, you know, I won't, I won't bring it up, but it's been really nice. Another staff person will be like, mission obsessed, this is this, this is that. And they can point it, it's just been really cool. So. I haven't had to do that just myself, but I would like more folks to mm -hmm. bring it up. And I mean, we've only had, it started in January, so we only have yeah. at least six months of this. So I'm, I'm looking forward to what the end of the calendar year, calendar year looks like with this theme. You know, and that I think is really helpful to, to, to remind us all, especially if we work in nonprofits or in schools or in places like that, that, you know, you've only been doing this since January. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's only since January and already you're seeing uh, you're, you're seeing that Mission Obsessed has had some really positive impact. And I also just really love what you said too, that uh, Mission Obsessed allows people a, an opportunity for self-care and protects um, individual practitioners in a way as well. It's, it's not, it's, uh, because you might, uh, it is possible to look at Mission Obsessed as, oh, well, what I need you to do is to pour 110% of yourself into this mission at all costs. And that's actually not at all what, what, um, you're wanting of your staff. What you're wanting them is to put 100% of their time and resources, or as close to 100% as we can get to reasonably, because we're human, right? Um, uh, into doing what we can do and not overextending ourselves into things that we really can't. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm just imagining of all of the, the, the teachers who were trying to completely transform things that have never happened in a digital environment into something that could happen via Zoom and, and, and Twitter, Twitter and all of the social media spaces and all of the clients that I worked with were just full of people who felt like they were just failing their students each and every single day. And, and just, and I, and I, and I have a hunch that if there were some kind of parallel notion of mission obsessed that, that existed for us as educators at the time, that perhaps we could have looked at ourselves at the end of the day and said, you know what, I did absolutely my best. And that's, that is not only is it all I could do, but it actually is enough. Mm -hmm. It completely was enough. And, and, and what a powerful message that, that, that would have been. Yeah, because I think we have to remember folks have their own life and choices. They have everything they need to be whatever they want to be in their lives. Sometimes yeah. folks need help unlocking that. Um, and so that could be a role that helping um, professions or educators or whomever could play really. I mean, could be other support system. Um, but but we don't have the solutions for folks. So yeah. Like it's very, it, we can get into some savior complex there that can be harmful. So I think it's it's a reminder that that especially with our youth, we're like on their own. They're teenagers. 
and they don't have stable stable housing and really difficult challenges in getting gaining employment. Like all of these things are happening. Um, you can get into, you know, it, I think it comes from a they deserve better thing, which I think we can all agree. And sometimes I think we all know it takes one moment, one person to show up for that to be transformative. And so, so it, and a lot of it is little. We we can just be kind in a moment. We can, um, you know, be supportive or um, like unlock unlock something for another person, and that be enough. And it be super transformative. And so these little moments, not the big things. I think the big things help, but like it's not always the big things that can be transformative, particularly for young people. Um, and so I think that's why it's important. Like if we can focus on what we are here to do what our role is and we're really good at that. Imagine all those little moments we can unlock. Um, and I think it can cascade. And I, there are gonna be times when we don't show up as our best selves, but a lot of that, you know, is where self-care is really important to do. And it's hard for educators because, you know, uh, the demand on, on on educators is super high. The workload is super high. Um, but I think, I think adding on top that all the things we aren't doing just makes it really tough to show up in a like energetically positive way um I, I, it's it's tough i mean we're living in a really strange time <laughs> but yeah and and actually i think you know we'll take a break and actually i'm hoping our last question uh, could could address that a little bit does it sounds like like mission, having a mission is something that most schools have most schools have a mission, and and then and then what what might it mean to to really live that mission out loud? You know, what might it mean? I think would be a really interesting thing. And just having you know, granted, only since January, but you have done this since January. I'm wondering what lessons you, you might have learned. So when we come when we come back from break, we'll talk a little bit about how how somebody might become mission obsessed, or how an organization might become mission obsessed. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll have a final thought from Daniela Figueroa, Director of Programs at Youth on Their Own, which is a Tucson-based nonprofit that supports youth experiencing homelessness to graduate from high school. Youth on Their Own is a local nonprofit that supports the high school graduation and continued success of Pima County youth experiencing homelessness. Since its founding in 1986, Yoro has helped thousands of young people graduate from high school and pursue their dreams. If you'd like to get involved, consider donating to Yoro's annual back to school drive starting July 1st, Yoro will be collecting food, hygiene products, and school supplies to help homeless youth in our community start the school year off right. If you'd like to make a financial contribution, don't forget that all donations to Yoro are tax deductible and eligible for the Arizona Charitable Tax Credit for those who li live in Arizona. For more information, go to yoto.org or follow Yoro on Facebook or Instagram. All right, and we're back. So last question, Daniela. Uh, if a school or a nonprofit, government agency, or other helping organization wanted to become mission obsessed, what are three things that you've learned in this process that you would recommend for them to do? Hmm. Yeah, I, I think something that uh, Elizabeth, our CEO, did really well in rolling this out is uh, very intentionally explaining the why. Hmm. Why is it important? You know, we have a mission. Why? Why do we need to do this? And um, as I said, there's some reservations from folks who, because because you don't want to be so narrowly focused that you miss up, like you miss, you read, don't read the room. <laughs> and for us, that really matters because young people change over time, you know. Um, so you want to be relevant. Uh, but I think uh, um, she, she did really a good job of explaining why this was important for us now and. Um, coming at it from a recognition of maybe other ways we've been in the past and this is an intentional shift and she also gave examples right off the bat of how what does this look like what could this look like for us and then you know had a bunch of questions we can ask ourselves so right away there was a why and then some ways that we can immediately implement this um and then i think once the wise established it's other folks supporting each other. Because you're going to have changed cheerleaders on your team 
And those, those are very powerful folks, especially when you're trying to roll out something new and engaging with them first. So then they can rally around that and help other folks get on board is really key. Um, I think after that is, is kind of what I, I was talking about that then what does it look like more specifically? We have four departments in our, in our program, um, our, our program department, four sub departments. We have our data and systems team. We have our schools team. We have an alumni program as well. So there's the alumni program. And then there's our youth services team that is where kind of the food pantry stuff goes. And so, so they had to really work out, okay, what does this mean for us specifically? If I'm, you know, helping a youth get their food or I'm um, looking at a, a data report, analyzing data, or, you know, working with an alumni who's post high school, um, how does Mission Obsessed show up there? Mm -hmm. uh, that has really helped make it more day to day. Because um, the Mission Obsession is a, is a big picture thing. And so yeah. that we think about the implementation, the how, how do we do this in my role? How does this is relevant to me in the day to day? Um, and then I think uh, the last really piece is picking the course. Mm. Uh, you do so much work to, to, to roll something out. And then if you don't reinforce it consistently, it'll just go away. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think it's us bringing it up over and over again. We just had a, an in-service week last week with our team and, and Mission Obsessed came up. It was like an intentional part of, of this time we were spending together. And so that's what we're kind of trying to practice right now is mm -hmm. keeping it alive. <laughs> um, and not just, as I said, not just me, I think everybody really committing to that. And some of that establishing the why right at the beginning gets that investment. Because obsession, that word can have some negative con connotations. Mm -hmm. There aren't healthy obsessions. From a positive spin though, obsession means deep love, can also mean like a lot of love yes. for something. Um, and I think that's the place we're coming from is, is we all really care for this mission. We see just, we get to the, the awesome privilege to work with really amazing youth. It's really an honor. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're a special group. And so cultivating that love for what we do and the population we work with in this lens of mission focus helps us not, um, use that love in some negative ways, which can mean saving, can mean not taking self-care, working those extra three hours every day just to get caught up. Um, it, it's, it can be balanced in a strange sense. <laughs> so that doesn't feel balanced when you talk about that word, but I, I think to, for us, it means more like we have a lot of love and care for what we do, but it's focused and it's in our lane. And I think those two things are really key elements of, of something like Mission Obsessed. So, we talk about it and we, 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 we talk about it in the context of all the things, data, we talk about it in the context of boundaries. And I think that's really helped keeping up that intention over time and getting folks to see that, you know, this mission obsessed thing is a really, really great, um, as I said, what it's a purpose is rallying cry around what we do. Yeah. So it sounds like then that, that the main things would be number one, have a mission that's worth being obsessed about. Start <laughs> with that, like have a mission this, and, and for goodness sakes, Yoda's mission of helping homeless youth graduate high school, uh, for, for goodness sakes, that, that's a fantastic thing to do. Uh, and, and, and it clearly energizes the staff that I've had a chance to get to know and meet. But then number, number two, you really gotta have your leadership on board from the get-go, that if this, this has to be something that that your leadership supports. And then number three, it has to happen every single day. Mm -hmm. It has to be something that we talk about, that we say, that we actually use as a filter when we're making uh, different kinds of decisions. And, and also that, that, that aspect of Mission Obsessed that I didn't think we'd get into as much, but I, I'm really intrigued by, especially as I do a lot of work in this self-care space. But, but this idea of um, when we say yes too much, we are you're in effect saying no to something else and so your so mission obsessed allows us to always make sure our yes is the kind of yes that we want to give there's always the yes that we want to give and just from a practitioner's point of view you know if, if i have to you know if, uh, you say no i can't write you this hotel um, voucher uh, that that causes 
you know, it's just likely to cause some kind of feeling and that's just going to need to get processed and dealt with. It, it is much easier to, to be able to say that no, it says, no, I can't do this for you because what I can do is all of this. I can yeah. do all of this and I will always be here for you for these things. So long as I'm always saying this kind of yes. yes. And, and that, that, that is a really, uh, I'm going to do some reflection and thinking about what that might look like for, for teachers to have that same kind of mission obsessed to say, you know what? I'm not going to be buying school lunches out of my own paycheck anymore. I'm not going to do that because that allows me to make sure that I've got resources to do this. Um, and, and, you know, Mike, cause that's a horrible notice to, to have to, to say. Um, and yet if, if, if teachers stop doing that, it might force a food services department to solve a problem. Um, and that, that might be a really important thing to do. Yeah, I think that's exactly what it does. It puts the responsibility where it belongs. Yeah. Because we're band-aiding what are systemic issues and the 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 solution to those things happen at the system level so often. <laughs> and it requires a lot of folks involved. Like I alone cannot solve even one person's homelessness mm -hmm. unless I'm gonna be that person's caretaker forever. Like yeah. they're a part of my family. I'm gonna like they're you know what I mean? And that's just not really realistic for the amount of youth that need help, at least for us, that's just not realistic. Let alone the boundaries of that. But um, you know, I I think I think we have to be really mindful of that. And there is an impact to that. Um, but I think, you know, I think saying no, I say this sometimes out, out with the team and I'm not sure that they quite understand. I don't know if I've done a lot of work to explain what I mean, but no can be a loving thing. Yes. We, we tend to think of yes being good, no being bad. Especially, especially in human services work, because the yes means you get a thing, the no means you don't. But no can be very loving. It's really, really important. Um, it keeps us in our lane. Then it also helps folks navigate and deal with no. If we're yesing folks left and right, and then all of a sudden they start to get no somewhere else, there's this, this, this expectation we're kind of setting up that's not sustainable. And folks don't do well with yes all the time either. So. I think I think this mission obsessed helps us balance that no is is a can be a positive thing, yeah. you know. And 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 yes, sometimes it has an impact. But what a opportunity to, for us! What an opportunity to help a young person navigate then what, and if they need help with it, then what we can provide that support. And then they some youth are already there, but some youth then can practice that then what. Yeah. Okay. We all need to deal with the no. So I think, I think it it can be a loving thing, and I I um, think it's really important in this element of mission obsessed and why it matters that we are clear about our role. Because if we're not, we're never sure what to say yes to or no to, and that conversation can't happen. Of like, if I'm an educator, and I and I know this firsthand. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, you know, if a young person, a student of mine came and said, you know, I need all these things. Oh man, do I want to help? Yeah. And it's just, is it, am I the right person? Probably not. Not, not if you need bus money or if you need all of these things, because what's going to happen when I don't have money and the, you know, third time this young person can, comes and I say, no, there's, that has consequences too. So, it, you know, it's tricky. It's hard. We're in the resources as a profession on both sides, schools and, and nonprofits. And so, I can, I can. Putting, putting that responsibility where it goes is, is systemically a, a loving a loving aspect of no but but then even just as as we interact with the people that we serve too uh, that 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 no i am not your answer to everything and i never was meant to be i am i am here as a caring professional to support the things that i know i can do and was trained to do and i will do that to my utmost i i, I can't and i i won't do the rest not you know, because number one, I really can't. And number two, because it's not really super great for you if I try mm -hmm. uh, to, to do that is, is really, uh, th th I think that's going to be, I'm, I'm really curious to see the comments from our listeners, because I think that idea is going to be a really challenging uh, idea that I, I could see some people saying, wow, what a relief. And then other folks saying, no, we have to meet the needs of the students in our classroom. And, and both are true, right? Like both are true. Mm -hmm. And, and it's, it's that, there's different ways of going about that. I think are really just, just is going to be neat to see. 
Yeah. Yeah. And, it, and, 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 you know, I, I think too, that, uh, it's more, it's less a question of can, but more of should. Yeah. We, because I could, maybe I, I do have a lot of resources um, that I can provide for my students or the youth myself. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that I could take it more as a, as a, as a should I. Yeah. Um, I don't think it makes sense sometimes to do that. And, and I'll say this too. We approach all of this with a growth mindset lens, which means we're still learning a yeah. lot about what mission of CES looks like. And as culturally your circumstances change, as our resources change, um, some of the bounds of that focus can change. And we're flexible enough to say, you know, we talk about this all the time, uh, that context matters. And so I could say yes to a something now that six months from now, we might say no to mm -hmm. and vice versa. And so I think that could be really, in our organization, we tend to change a lot and uh, we're not very black and white. In some senses, we definitely have black and white policies and procedures, but we always leave them for gray. And that could be uncomfortable because the lane can change just slightly over time. Yeah. And so, um, you know, we're still learning. And I think that that as long as we approach with, you know, whether we're an educator or a nonprofit professional, you know, whatever, whatever our role is, that is, as long as we approach it from a context of curiosity, growth, and learning and understand like, yeah, we're going to mess up. I mean, like, we're going to mess up here. Sometimes we think we're being mission obsessed and just like falls flat or whatever reason we're like, oh, we kind of missed the mark. We think we're open to that. And I, I do feel, feel is an important element of anytime you're going to go down a track of getting really good at what you do in your role. Um, you definitely have to approach that from a learner's lens. And so I'm learning, you know, a lot of the stuff I'm saying, I think is important and I think could change over time if you know our mission statement evolves if we do decide to delve into other areas but I think think having having doing the best you can with the resources you have right now in the key role that you're in is always a good place to start always a good place to start and a beautiful place to be for sure Danielle, I just want to say thank you again for being here today and thank you for sharing your experience leading youth on their own to be mission obsessed each and every day and uh, listeners, I hope you enjoyed our show. And I, I hope you reach out to me or to Daniela with your thoughts on our conversations. I have, there's a lot that we talked about, especially if we're, if we're in the school space, really challenges a, a lot of the, the ethos and culture that, that we've kind of developed over the last little bit. Um, you can find Youth on Their Own, again, at www.yoto.org. And you can find me at www.tgseducationalconsulting.com. Until next time, may you have many opportunities to be as generous with yourself as you are with those you serve.